how to filter and clean a point cloud to get a ground surface using the CSF and rasterization method. Download Cloud Compare, an open source point cloud processing software. Drag and drop your point cloud into the main 3D view. Once the point cloud has been loaded, highlight it in the DB tree and click the plugins menu and select the CSF filter. To run any operation on a point cloud, it must be highlighted in the DB tree. The CSF or cloth simulation filter basically flips the point cloud upside down and simulates laying a virtual cloth over this inverted surface. Where the cloth touches the point cloud, it's assumed to be the ground. The rest of the point cloud, such as buildings, trees, or other objects that stick out are identified as non-ground points. In most cases, I use the relief scene with slope processing off. But if you have a data set with cliffs and steep slopes, you may want to experiment with these settings. When you go over to the advanced parameter settings tab, you'll see three parameters you can alter with their definitions to the right of them. Set the cloth resolution to 0.4 and the classification threshold to 0.2 and click OK. The CSF does not modify your original point cloud. Instead, it generates two new point clouds, one containing the off-ground points identified by the filter and another containing the remaining ground points. Change the visualization style of the off-ground cloud and compare it to the ground cloud. If no ground points are mistakenly included, in the off-ground cloud, the filter has worked as intended. If there are no off-ground points left in the ground cloud, you're done with the CSF. If the ground cloud still has some partial trees or buildings left over, uncheck the off-ground points in the DB tree. Highlight the ground points and rerun the CSF filter, doubling the values for both cloth resolution and classification threshold. This creates a more aggressive a filter to further target any off-ground points that were left behind from the first iteration. Check to ensure no ground points were incorrectly filtered out. If some were, you can press the hotkey T to create a bounding box around those points. Press the hotkey I, then enter to segment those points inside that box. Next, highlight the ground point cloud in the DB tree along with your newly created segmented cloud and click the edit menu then merge. Alternatively, if too many ground points were incorrectly filtered out, you can instead choose to use the previous iteration of the CSF ground points as every new CSF that's ran creates new clouds allowing you to always go back a step. Once you have created a ground point cloud that looks satisfactory, highlight it and click the tools menu, projection, then select rasterize. We are going to use this tool to define a grid cell size and Cloud Compare will look at every point in that cell and delete all but the lowest point with the idea that this is the measurement that's made it through the grass or vegetation and is the best representation of the actual ground surface. The larger the cell size means a coarser DTM but also a smaller file size and better odds that the points remaining aren't non-ground points. I'll use one point Point zero, which means only one point will remain for every one meter by one meter cell size. Set the active layer to cell height values and the direction to the Z axis. The cell height to minimum, check the resample input cloud box and set the fill width drop down to leave empty. Then click the update grid button. If it looks okay, click the cloud button to export your results and click OK to close the rasterize tool. It can be helpful to visualize the results colorized by elevation. To do this, click the tools menu, projection, and select export coordinates to SF and check the Z axis box. You can alter the heat map by scrolling down in the properties box to the SF 
or a scalar field parameters box and dragging the arrow handles to change the colorization to identify any outliers which may exist due to poor vegetation penetration or anomalies left behind from the filtering. In this example, there are some points that look to be erroneous around the extremities of the point cloud where I wasn't able to walk with the scanner and veg penetration was poor, and also around the edges of some of the larger bushes that were filtered out by the CSF. To remove these manually, I again used the T hotkey to launch the segment tool, then left click to define the box and right click to end the selection, then press the O key which retains all the points outside of that box and press the delete key to delete the temporarily hidden points. Continue to manually clean your point cloud as needed. You may find it helpful to increase the point size when doing this. The amount of manual cleaning will depend on how many erroneous points were left behind by the the CSF and the rasterization process. The more aggressive you get with the CSF and the larger the cell size when rasterizing will mean less manual cleaning, but you'll reduce the resolution of your final DTM. When you're satisfied with the results, highlight the point cloud in the DB tree and click the save button to export your cleaned point cloud. The CSF and rasterization method is an easy, free, and quick way to strip away buildings trees, and low-lying vegetation when your data set has little noise below the ground. If you have a point cloud with erroneous points under the ground surface, this will cause issues as we are assuming the lowest return per cell size is the true ground and using that to define the ground surface. You can try using the median or average as the cell height for the rasterization process, but this leads to significant error from low-lying vegetation. If you have a bare earth site, this may be the better option. However, if you have low-lying veg, the lowest return will probably give better results unless there is significant noise under the ground surface. In the future, we'll explore other methods that will account for such issues.